and welcome to episode 41 of the Project Bag podcast. On the show for you this week. I've been thinking a lot about colour work and planning some exciting new projects, so I take you through how to pick the perfect colours. We continue the theme of colour work as I show you a quick guide to simple intarsia. And I have a finished object for you this week. No, your eyes don't deceive you. I finished it again. <laughs> Hello and welcome if you're new and welcome back if you're returning. It is lovely to be sat chatting with you again. I know I took a week off podcasting, but I had very good reason. I was vending at the virtual Wall Monty show. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> It was virtual, um, what, hashtag Monty at home. And I did a little review of video of virtual yarn shows um, on my channel. If you're curious about that, then go back and check that out. It's about 12 minutes long um, and takes you through some of the common misconceptions about yarn shows. But a huge thank you to everyone who supported me by liking, sharing, commenting, or maybe making a little purchase. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, before we get into the podcast proper, I'm going to start by saying something very important. I'm not gonna labor the point. It's quite simple, black lives matter. Trans people are people. My values are open and there for you to see. That is what I stand for. And I heard this phrase used somewhere else and I can't remember who it was. So if I can find out or if any of you know, just drop it in the comments below for me and I will try and credit that. I welcome everyone who welcomes everyone, okay? If you are down with that, then this is a space that is great for you to hang out in and a community for you to be a part of. If not, I quite understand if that means you choose not to spend your time here and I wish you well. I'm not going to say much more about it because my voice is not one that needs to be amplified here. I have no personal experience of either of these two issues and I know that I am sitting from a place of extreme privilege to be able to do that. Um, uh, but there are a whole myriad of resources out there on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, Netflix are prioritising certain shows as well and there, there, there's loads of options out there for you um, so I suggest if you are curious and want to know more go and find out. For those of you that are new here I'm Gemma it's lovely to meet with you so this podcast focuses on what I've been crafting for the last week or so and this past week I've been thinking a lot about colour work specifically choosing colour. This has come to the forefront of my mind for a couple of reasons. One, because I had so much fun helping customers choose colours for their projects through the virtual War Monty, and two, because I have a brand new pattern on the horizon that is going to be cast on very, very soon. We're actually casting on the 1st of July, and that is the Raise the Woof pattern by Casa Pinker. Now, this pattern came to my attention because it was gifted to me by a podcast viewer and friend of mine. We've become friends through our virtual knit nights on a Wednesday night. And uh, she gifted it to me for my birthday. Thank you very, very much, Jo. And uh, when I thanked her, said, Miss Long? <laughs> I was like, yes, of course. So for those two reasons, I've been thinking a lot about choosing yarn for colour. Now, before I talk about the make along, I want to talk to you a little bit about colour. It can be really hard to choose colours for colour work when you're not sure about how they're played together. So first of all, I wanna talk you through the process I went, I went through. I want to work from stash. So first of all, I needed to look at the measurements, look at the yardage and find out what I had enough of in a color to do the main color and the sleeves in. And I landed on this. This is Truly Hooked Expecto Patronum from the very first ever um, mystery theme box that I got. Um, it's a beautiful grey with undyed sections with speckles and blue. Now this is absolutely beautiful but the colour work comes into it and then nudges up against it. So I had to think really carefully about what I would choose to go with it. Now my first thought was of course to go with the um, light grey which was Patronus in the, in, in the box, but it's a standard semi-solid colorway from Verity Truly Hook. Now, can you see the issue with that? It's because it pulls out the gray from 
the expecto patronum. Now, if I have these butting up against each other with such bold sections of the light grey, there is a real chance that actually the section of colour work I'm doing might get lost and might blend. Let me give you another example. Here I have my Vida shawl uh, by Cecilia Lasada. Now the Vida was a mystery knit along, so I didn't know how the colours were going to be used. I just knew that she used a speckled variegated yarn and a semi-solid. So I chose these two beautiful colours, Aurora Borealis, from my signature collection and warning from my autumn winter 2019 range now i think you'll agree they go beautifully together so why am i not particularly happy well if i had my chance again i would have gone with two semi-solid colors and this is the reason why can you see where the purple in aurora borealis is blending with the purple of warning and so sometimes it looks like i've made a mistake or the colors bleed into each other. Also Aurora Borealis is heavily variegated and it's an absolutely beautiful colourway but where it's just the odd row here of garter in Aurora Borealis it's getting lost. The colour isn't really having chance to shine. I had to do it that way round because the, um, the reason they've gone for the semi-solid here is because of how heavily textured it is and the texture isn't going to show up in a heavily variegated yarn. Um, it looks okay in my semi-solid, but it would be completely lost in Aurora Borealis. So for that reason, I didn't want to use the Patronus with Expecto Patronum. Right, so what do I do? I rifled through my stash and I eventually came up with this blue. Now this is Drops Fable, but it is in my stash and for reasons that I'm not gonna go into here, um, I'm not actually gonna be buying drops anymore, but it's good yarn, it needs using. So, there you go. So it's got a grey blue tone to it, which matches with the speckles, but the speckles won't blend with the blue. So I think that will work really nicely for part of the colour work. And then I can either, so you're supposed to use four colours for this. Then I was thinking about going with the white so that the colour work stands out nicely. I can either use just two colours for the colour work or at that point I could bring in the Patronus and that would tie all of them together. I just have to be careful not to have the Patronus or the white butting up against Expecto Patronum. So what do you do if you've got colours and you're just really not sure that they're going to go together well? Well a really good tip would be to photograph your yarns actually lay them out front in, flat in front of you in really good natural light with some cloud cover is a really good idea for colours to come up um, as they should. Take the photograph and then turn it into black and white and hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here. Here are my colours laid out, photographed and then here they are with a black and white filter on. As you can see, the Patronus and Expecto Patronum really do blend in together too much. Now let's have a look at my next choice. Here you go, you can see in the grayscale, the black and white, that they really do contrast together nicely, which is really super important. So that's one tip. The other thing you could do is to print off um, a black and white version of the uh, pattern, of the picture, or the chart itself, and have a go at colouring it in with various colours with the felt tips and that will give you an idea as well of how your finished object will look and the same thing can be applied to a fade if you look at this I've got a five colour fade here it goes from light to dark to light using five of my colourways neutral tones lead oxide denim and dusk and if I move them into black and white, you can see how they transition together. So that would be my main tip for choosing colours for colour work. If you've got any ideas, any tips that you'd like to share, please do drop them down in the comments below. If you found that useful and informative, maybe give me a thumbs up on the like button. Let me know that uh, this was helpful for you. Uh, but let's get the discussion going. How do you choose colours for colour work projects? So that brings me to talking about actually starting this sweater. 
I realised that when I was asked for, to do a knit along, I had quite a few going on already. So let's have a chat about knit alongs. And I'm also going to pass over to Gemma and Julia, who discussed this pattern and the make along. Hopefully you'll enjoy. Jules, you asked, didn't you, if we would do it to be like a, an animal along or a pet along? Yeah, I was just... Or, and I never well, ever do alongs that are really specific, to be honest. Even the hip along has been open to all sorts of different animals. But this time I was actually going to do a woof along for that pattern. But I think that that isn't really what I do anyway on this podcast. It's all, it's all kind of the more the merrier, join in, make it your own. So I think, yeah, we need a name then for an along that focuses on projects with animals in. Drop your comments below and I think what we'll do is I will gift an animal pattern of your choice to the person whose um, name we choose. If the name is suggested by more than one person, I'll do that in a random number generator and it will generate it like that because as much as I would love to gift 20 people a pattern of their choice, I, I, I can't quite afford to do that. What do you reckon? Does that sound like a good idea? That sounds like a very good idea because yeah. I am pretty sure that some of you can come up better with something, something yeah, better. Petalong just sounds dodgy, guys. Petalong. Save us from the petalong. Petalong. Yeah. An animal along. Uh, anima, animal along is going to be hard to say. Yeah, pet along's a bit dodgy. And cat along and woof along are too animal specific. Yeah, and I've, I really liked the idea of a woof along, but some people are team cat and some people are team dog and some people are team bunny. So why have I chosen to mix commercial yarns with my hand dyed? First of all, you absolutely can. You just need to be careful that they are the same weight and it's helpful if, they're, if they've got the same fiber in, particularly for color work. Um, but as long as they're the same weight and work with the pattern that you've got, there's no reason why you shouldn't. But there is a bigger reason why I mixed commercial with my beautiful hand dyed yarns and that's because I discovered going through my stash that I lean more towards the special um, variegated unique colorways when I'm purchasing hand dyed yarn. I am definitely someone who purchases with an ooh shiny, I like that, and no thought as to what it will eventually become. So frustratingly, although I have a substantial collection of beautiful hand dyed yarns, I didn't actually have anything suitable in my stash with which to make this jumper. And it, semi-solids, I think, are really underappreciated and undervalued in hand dyed yarn. Um, talking to people, a lot of people shop in the same way as me, go for the pretty, ooh, shiny, heavily variegated yarns. But I think it's really important to have a really good collection of semi-solids. And that is why my debut collection for Midnight Diary does have some of my signature variegated colorways, but focuses a lot on having beautiful semi-solids that work together and are interchangeable and work really well for contrast and for color work and for fading as you can see here in some of the images I'm sharing with you. Most of these yarns are available on my website www.theprojectbag.co.uk at the moment uh, but excitingly I have had to open more dye to order slots because I can only dye so much for each show and I chose not to dye any of the Aurora Borealis colourway um, that is my signature collection and I was actually asked for it a lot over the weekend. Here is a skein of Aurora Borealis for you to see. Beautifully variegated. And so my signature collection focuses on these beautiful variegated yarns, but my debut collection as The Midnight Diary has these gorgeous um, semi-solids as well, which are really fun to play with. And what's nice is they're not like a solid commercial yarn in, in the way that they're flat. They are semi-solids because they are beautifully tonal. If you have a look again at denim and for example, at first glance it's one colour but actually it's several that play together really subtly and shaded. Now I didn't have this at the time when we were talking about the woof along, although the name will be what you decide, but Jo also very sweetly sent me some prizes. She sent me 
First of all, she sent me a bag for myself, uh, which you can fit um, most of a small child in. If you don't believe me, ask Sophie Swan uh, on the Spring Snowflake podcast, um, because her small child immediately got into it uh, and almost disappeared. And that is where my Raise the Woof is going to live. As you can see, it's slightly lost in there. It's beautiful fabric, beautifully made, a really nice drawstring tie and carry handles as well. Um, so do go and check out So Can Jo. But she also sent me one for you guys for a prize. And this is just beautiful. It is gloriously gold. I'm sure we can all agree someone would covet this. Um, again, it's a nice big size, perfect for um, multi-skein projects with that really nice drawstring tie. I'm not going to pull it shut. You don't need me to demonstrate it and I don't want to crease it. Um, I also have another prize that's been donated for the make along that we're going to have as well, which is from Sunnyside Handmade. Karen, she's based in France and she does these beautifully hand carved, hand etched accessories for knitters, crocheters and sewists. I actually chose to buy something in her recent shop update. Like many small businesses, her shop has been closed during the first stage of the pandemic while things were going a bit awry with the post as well, but she has now reopened and I want to show you what I purchased. So for myself, I purchased this um, thread organizer for use with my cross stitch. It's got 15 holes for your silks to go through and a really sweet fox in the middle. So it's really nice quality, nice and thick, and I'm really excited. But Karen not only sent that, but she sent two other things as well. She sent this sweet selection of stitch markers as a gift for me, and she sent this sweet selection as a gift for you for a prize for the make-along, woof-along, or whatever we decide to christen it. So thank you very much, Karen. Do go and check out Sunnyside Handmade if you can and give her some love and support. Um, the way you guys champion small businesses is so important and that so fills my soul, so thank you. Okay, so I mean, we're just gonna touch on a couple of whips. I've only really worked on two this week because I've been super busy. The first you've kind of already seen, the Vida shawl, I am tantalizingly close to finishing this. I think I've got about 40 rows to go. Um, but the last row, I've actually undone it. It's in the middle because I've undone it twice because apparently counting to five is now beyond me. Pandemic brain, can I blame the pandemic? I'm gonna go ahead and blame the pandemic. So I was really hoping to have this finished, but with the best will in the world, having had to rip back to this stitch marker a couple of times when I've got to the end of a row, it was never gonna happen. Um, the other project I've been working on that's received a lot of love this week is the Humbug hoodie. Now I've got a top tip for all of you out there. If you ever knit anything with a hood, please don't think the hood is like the final leap to the finish. It actually represents almost as much knitting as the garment itself. So here we have my finished body. This is a free pattern from a leaflet from Artisano Yarns that I happen to have in a copy of a magazine. I'm holding it back to front, sorry. There's the front. It is designed to be knit flat and it requires four colors, I think, three colors, but I decided to use a paint box DK acrylic that I had in stash and I just love this stitch definition. It's really beautiful. And some leftovers of my DK in the neutral tones colorway. You can see that's slightly variegated there. And I've now moved on to the hood. I adapted it because it was meant to be knit flat, but I changed it to knit it in the round because I thought it'd be faster and I'm really glad I did. And then I split for the front and back at the point of the armhole shaping. So that made it go a lot quicker. Okay, so I'd hoped to work the hood all in grey to use up more of the yarn that I had left. But unfortunately, when I realised just how much fabric there was going to be, I knew there's no way I'd be able to get it finished. So what I've done is I've actually split the grey into two balls. So you can see I've got a grey hanging off here. And at this end, I've got grey and green. And I'm working with a method called intage. I'll show you here, but I will also try and record a mini to show you how it's done. Now this is another form of color work. So not stranded color work as we've done before, um, but intage where you have separate colors and you 
work it flat and you don't carry the strands across the work. So as you can see, there's no strands going across there at all. The colour is individual. Now to get this, I, what I had to do was take my scales and weigh my yarn and then wind the ball off until I had um, half and half. My hope is that I will be able to use the grey not only to edge the hood, I've got, I've got to get to 28 centimetres. It is not 28 centimetres yet. I thought this was going to be a finished object. Nah. Um, I've got to get to 28 centimetres, but I'm hoping to also do the armbands in the grey as well, if I have enough. So fingers crossed for me. If not, it's not the end of the world. I've got plenty of the paint box um, in the green, so it will be fine. It is now late for my godson's birthday, but I did a year older than his current age. So hopefully he will get lots of wear out of it. Here's a quick peek at intarsia. You start knitting in the way you would normally, and then when you get to the point where you need to change yarns, you drop the colour you're using and pick up the next colour, in my case, picking up the green, allowing the colour you've dropped to hang over you've picked up. Then you can carry on knitting as normal. Simple. despairing that you are never going to see a finished object here on this podcast again I have a finished object no your eyes are not deceiving you it is once again the calypso cardigan I finished this initially on the 4th of May but I wasn't happy with the way the front was hanging I'd picked up the stitches without the pattern and I picked up too few and as a result the bands were curving in and it just didn't sit nicely I had the idea of blocking it and um, sorting it out that way but I didn't block it and didn't block it I put it off and put it off and deep down I knew the reason that I was putting it off was because I knew it wouldn't work so in the end, I bit the bullet, ripped back the bands completely, picked them up again, picking up more stitches and knit both bands again. I then soaked it. I finished it on Saturday night or a couple of nights before that. And um, I popped it into a bucket of cold water with some hair conditioner just to soak it for a little while and soften it up. It had been on the needles for two years by that point. I started it in June 2018, finished it for the first time in May 2020, and then the second time in June 2020. <laughs> and I just hung it to dry on a hanger. I gave it a spin in the washing machine to finish off first, to, to get most of the water out, and then I hung it and um, let it block itself naturally that way. And then today I just sewed up the um, my mattress stitch to the back of the collar and here we are. You can see from this video that it is hanging much more nicely. It does look much, much better. Please bear in mind that this is not knit for me. It is knit for someone significantly smaller than me and it's the first size, the extra small, whereas I would definitely need a large to be comfortable but it look, it's easier to show you on a person than on the hanger. Okay, so that's it really from me this week as far as creative content goes. I have been doing some cross stitch, but it's been, uh, well, it's been a little bit sporadic because I've been focusing on getting things done for the wall Monty. Um, that's out of the way now, so I'm gonna be focusing a lot more on um, getting some things finished. And I'm also working on finishing off sorting out my creative space as well. So I'm just gonna go on to a bit of general chit chat. Of course, it stands to reason that I am going to be moving on to thinking about Perth Festival of Yarn, which is taking place virtually um, in September. Um, now Perth, as I talked about in my previous video, The Truth About Virtual Yarn Shows, is going down a slightly different route. The website for the Perth Festival of Yarn, um, I'll put the address here, and down in the description box for you, is going to become a marketplace, an online shop for exclusives. So vendors who are going to be taking part in the Perth Festival of Yarn in Scotland in September will now be creating exclusive items and colorways just for Perth Festival of Yarn that will only be available on this website. And when they're gone, they're gone. It's super exciting. I've got a few things up my sleeve. I know I'm not really wearing sleeves at the moment, little cap sleeves, but you can fit quite a lot up there. Um, I've got a few things up my sleeve that I'm not gonna talk to you about just yet, but if there's anything particular you'd like to see me do, bearing in mind it's only available through Perth Yarn Fest, then just drop me a comment below. But I really hope that you are 
up for a fun weekend in September, albeit virtually. And yeah, make sure you are following Perth Festival of Yarn for all the updates on Instagram. Uh, it's just been announced that Dye Candy are do is doing the commemorative Perth skein and pre-orders for that open on 28th June and places are strictly limited. So, oh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I might get more one for my anniversary. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in other news, um, we in England are moving out of lockdown. Shops are reopening, um, provided they are observing strict social distancing measures and hygiene measures. And I had two very different experiences today. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I went into Hobbycraft and it was brilliant. I was greeted warmly by a polite person in a high-vis jacket at the door. I was directed politely to the sanitisation point where I was able to sanitize my hands but also use blue roll and um, spray a different sanitization spray to sanitize the basket that I was carrying there were signs around the shop there were dots to indicate where two meters apart is and everyone was really friendly customers and staff alike and sort of saying well I'd like to go that way you okay so we stepped away because some people seem to think two meters only refers to sort of in front of and behind but it's actually the whole space around you so the experience was really positive and the staff were really friendly and I felt really safe. Then I went into another shop which was sim had a similar setup um, and there was a sanitation point but it wasn't pointed out to me, I had to find it myself. And then when I came to pay, um, I couldn't see where to go for the tills. I could see where people were coming out but I couldn't see where to go to go in. So I asked and they directed me and we're queuing along one wall with aisles going up towards it. Now if you are queuing against the wall, people can't get up through the aisle and round past you, they need to go along to the next one up and queue there. Unfortunately not everyone realised this was the case and um, yeah, I stepped back because someone was trying to squeeze past. As I stepped back someone else came in front of me and I said hang on a minute excuse me I'm queuing please don't jump the queue um, and then she stopped and stood right in front of me and it was a really uncomfortable experience because she was literally a foot away from me and I found myself feeling particularly panicked I was laughed at for my mask that I was wearing I was told I was being silly for trying to get her to step away from me and in the end I ran from the store um, in a bit of a state, kind of flinging my would-be purchases onto um, a big box of garden furniture that was by the security guy who was near the entrance. There wasn't one near the exit, so I couldn't hand my would-be purchases to anyone. And I just said, I can't do this. People aren't observing the two meters. Um, I'm gonna be calling the manager of that shop and letting them know. So I guess what I'm saying is be kind, be a decent human, really, which brings us nicely round to my statement at the start of the episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you will be back soon. I have got some more bonus videos coming your way. I will be doing some Ask for mini tutorials coming up in the next week um, and some other little bits and pieces as well. So I hope you will join me soon. We're going to finish up today by taking a sneak peek at some of the makes that you've been doing for our make-alongs. They are wrapping up very soon. You've only got um, a couple of weeks to finish the hip-along entries and the isolation along is ending at the end of this month as well. So I will leave you with some of your beautiful works of knitting, crochet, sewing, stitching, and all the things. And I will see you very, very soon. Take care, bye.